watching Thrifty Kniffy. Hello everyone and welcome to Thrifty Kniffy. So as you can tell by the title, I'm going to be doing a little cleanup video today. I haven't done one for a while, so I've kind of been itching to do that. J.O. Ventures Outdoors and Tom both did one recently and just reminded me how much fun they are to do. I'm going to be cleaning up this Colonial Barlow, just a cheap, inexpensive Barlow that I picked up. has a cracked handle and... Uh, it was originally advertised as uh, having a bone handle, so that's what I thought I was getting, but nope, this, this is plastic, 100%. And uh, that's okay. So may have paid a little bit more than I would have otherwise, but we're just going to jump into this thing, get it cleaned up, try different methods. I've brought in the ultrasonic cleaner over here. And we're going to give that a try. I haven't tried that on a knife yet. Um, also going to try... Uh, a couple of new little tools I've made up just out of popsicle sticks and we're going to scrub on this to try to be to protect the blades as much as possible. I don't want to put any scratches in them so, so we're just trying to take the rust off here. I don't know how far I'm going to take the restoration. I guess it really more depends on the amount of time it's it's taking to get to where I want to go. But I, I will take it as far as I feel like I have time to do. I try different methods. Uh, I'm going to try to loosen up the rust and get all the red stuff, orange stuff off get this to be nice and smooth as you can see we'll take a close look at the before here so we everybody has an idea of what we're looking at here well you got rust inside the lines of there the barlow where it's you know got the impression there it's all rusted inside of there the back springs are looking pretty rough of course these are carbon blades so you're going to have a little bit of discoloration on the springs but just as for natural patina but the the rust is what we're mainly interested in getting off of there it's really rough but those uh those brass liners are looking pretty sad and they're all pretty corroded and the channels are absolutely filth it feels like the spring's pretty good but the rust is just preventing it from moving smoothly so there's no snap you can hear a little bit of snap on the open when i really kind of shove it open but the uh <laughs> yeah it, it's the movement is bad take this as far as i can like i said this is a colonial barlow those are a dime a dozen on ebay well i wish they were that cheap but they are very plentiful and we'll just uh see what we can do let's see if you can see in the channel there at all it is really rusty it's tough to see possibly from that angle but i'll try to get the uh, the light down here you can see it it's just crustacean down in there but we'll get started and uh, see where we go. Just scrubbing on the blades with the uh, loose, you know, a loose uh, dry rub, basically. Not going to uh, invoke any kind of oil or anything at this point and just try to uh, really loosen up what I can off of the blade. And already I can tell that that's making a difference. You can see that coming off on there. So, you know, we're doing something. We're going to uh, definitely put oil on it at some point. But to me, this is a good way to kind of just loosen that really. Oh, well, there went the there went the, uh, the tip on that. Maybe we'll use this one. Got that one a little too narrow, I think. But we're just going to scrub on that. And you can see the rust coming off of there. Just the surface rust. I'm going to put a piece of cardboard under here to uh, kind of level the blade out.
All right, so now I've started using this little piece of wood to pick away at it too. Just gets in the channel a little bit better. And you see it's coming out of there slowly. We've got dumps of rust coming out. But uh, I'm gonna go ahead and position the blades so that the springs are a little more exposed. And then I'm gonna put in the bath to try to loosen up the rust a little more. And then I'm gonna come back and keep doing this. There we go. Uh, just gonna put this in here for like three minutes or something. And uh, try to loosen up any of the dirt. Uh, we're going to let that ride, and then we'll come back when it's done. All right. So you can see how cloudy that water's gotten. It's definitely helped to remove some of the crap from in there. But we're just going to continue to scrub. Let's see if we can even tell. Yeah, if you look down in there, you can see how much crap has come out of there. So I'm going to go ahead and put it in for a couple more minutes and, uh, and see if we can improve on that a little bit. Might need a little more water. So I'm going to get some of that and then start it up again. All right, I'm just going to add some more water. Get that completely submerged. And then we're going to crank this thing up again for another three minutes. Okay, so... I'm going to be completed with this for a while. I'm going to call that good for cleaning out the uh, the cavity, the loose stuff. And we're going to take this out of the way. But just to give you a, an example of what we've got here. Look at all that crap that's come out of there. That's pretty good. I don't know that it would have been any better than just rinsing it off, honestly. But we've got all that junk in there and uh, contained, so that's good. And it prevent me from having to take it over to the sink so between the uh, rust that's come out here and what's come out in there we're doing a pretty good job so far i'm gonna go ahead and clean up a little bit here and then i'll come right back okay so we're back just put another towel down here and we're just going to try to wipe this off a little bit get it dry already just from the water as a lubricant uh, i can tell that the action's improving a lot not nearly as gritty So we're making progress, definite progress. Important part, really focus on is the is the tang where it meets the spring. That's going to be an area where you're going to fill all the grit. So you definitely want to do what you can to clean that portion of the blade as much as possible and smooth it back out. That's a very vital part of the action of the blade. But you can tell just from my moving it how much easier that is to and you are starting to get a little bit of snap back much struggle i was having before when i was opening the blades if you watched in the you beginning see all that uh the orange stuff is starting to go away and got a little here but the surface rust is really what i'm trying to focus on right now and we'll see how far we want to polish and buff it and and I'm going to add a little bit of oil now to try to loosen up this harder stuff. So we're going to add a little ballastol. I'm just going to give it a little squirt down in the cavity here. And bring that blade down there. But you can see just how nasty that is. Look at that coming off that stick. So we are definitely making progress. We are going to position those blades again, and it's a little more difficult to do now with the lubrication in there. We're going to position those guys, and we'll put it in for another three. But here we go. All right, final few seconds here, and then we're going to clean this tank out. Just want to kind of show you how bad it's gotten. It is so cloudy now that you can barely see the knife in there. And uh, if we remove the basket, you can see the bottom. I mean, it's just complete mud water now. 
So I'm going to empty this out, clean it. It's too bad to uh, try to clean anything with this water and just freshen up the water. Okay, so now I've refilled the tank and I'm just going to bring it over here so we can see. And here's what I've been using. Just glass plus. All right. Give it about five, six squirts. About all I do. Just to kind of get some cleaner in the water there. And we're going to we're going to soak this a little more here. All right, we're ready to rock. Here we go. Another three minutes. All right, another round of the ultrasonic, and you can see that uh, the water's not nearly so bad now. So I think we're going to stop there in terms of the ultrasonic cleaning and then try to uh, just do the rest manually here. But I'm going to do a little more cleanup, and then I'll be right back. All right, so now we're just going to start swabbing down the uh, the channel and trying to get all the remaining debris out of there. That liner being in the way, we need something pretty narrow. And I've got a few of these little cosmetic brushes that are still even a little tight to put in there. But you can see it's still coming off pretty heavy. And uh, it's going to take some time to get this out. So we're definitely going to speed up this step because you're looking at probably 30, 40 minutes of work and just use like a small screwdriver to kind of wipe the channel through and try not to scratch up anything. And we're just going to continue on with that method and uh, maybe that'll help speed up the process. All right, along with the uh, swab that I've been using here, these little pieces of sheet, they kind of start fraying and I don't want to get that caught in the spring. So I'm going to start using these little alcohol prep pads and and give those a shot and see how those work out. Alright, so I've already began a little bit of the buffing, just kind of get a pre-idea of what it's going to do. But we've got the Haverty's 100 here, and I've just applied a buffing wheel to the drill. And I'm just going to buff it out um, with the drill bit a little bit, and then I'm going to come back behind that with uh, hand polish. All right, so that's just a rough polish there. Now I'm going to come back and do it by hand. I'm just going to start uh, the hand polish now. I'm going to use some flits. This stuff is pretty nice. Really, in, for a final step on the knife, it's really good. A little application on the blade. And this is going to be a long process too, so this will definitely be sped up. All right, here we go.
Okay, so polishing this blade as well, both sides. Still some little rough spots here on the edge there. So we're still working on that. Just getting it overall polished a little at a time. But uh, it's coming along. Not completely satisfied with where I'm at yet, so we're going to keep on working. Okay guys, so let's skip forward to the end here. I I did, didn't get to show as much as I would have liked in terms of the steps and things. Things got pretty uh, crazy, just a lot of different trial and error type situations where it wasn't really worth filming. Um, ended up just using a lot of the buffing wheel from the the drill. Uh, that was ended up being the main... Thing that I use, you can just use little buffing wheels on Amazon or whatever, and they just have a quarter inch attachment. And it makes it really handy if you don't want to, you know, go out to the garage, use a regular buffing wheel. And it polishes up pretty nice. And uh, I wouldn't say it's quite as nice as I know I can make it. I could take it out to the buffing wheel, that'd be a little more, well, the one in the garage, it's a little more industrial, I guess you could say. And do a quicker and more efficient job and probably an overall better job. But I've got the blades oiled up. They're nice and snappy now. And if you look at the beginning of the video again, that was pretty dreadful. Now I've got snap. And both blades. Gave it a little KPL. Cavity's been cleaned out pretty good. I wouldn't say it's all gone. I'm sure I could still pick up more. But, uh... I think I've got to the point where, where it's not going to be rusting anymore inside there. Clean the joints here, and that makes a huge difference in terms of the smoothness. And uh, now you got maybe about a five and a half pull on this guy, and still nice and snappy. Also went ahead and sharpened it. Uh, Use the work sharp sharpener, you know, and uh, started it. Started at 320, then went to 400, then from 400 to 600, and then 600 to 800, and then a ceramic hone, and then a strop. So I took it all the way up the ladder, and now I've got some really nice cutting edges on this guy. Can definitely use it every day. So you can see that. Cuts paper with no problem. And did the same thing to the, the little pin blade. And gave it a nice edge. So we've got a nice little everyday knife now. And everything that you would need for an everyday carry. Because you're going to have wonderful vintage looking knife and just a great little Made in America icon and a Colonial Barlow. Nice little blades on it now that are easy to sharpen. 1095 just comes alive so quick. And it took me maybe 15 minutes to get both blades sharpened. It was really quick. So Very useful uh, to put on the Work Sharp Sharpener. A little bit of a challenge to get it in the clamp but you just have to kind of practice with it really the smaller blade you'd really have to just put just a small portion of that in the clamp to get clearance and i put it about a 22 and a half inch or <laughs> 20 22 and a half degree edge on these which i always seem to think is pretty close to the stock edge for uh some of these imperials and colonials it has to be pretty close to that i imagine but uh, yeah, pretty impressed with the uh, way it turned out. Got the bone all shined up. The bolster's all shined up. Springs all shined up. Top of the blades look pretty good. And you still got some patina on here. No big deal with that. Nail neck got cleaned out really good. And you know, 
you can tell it's used that's fine I'm not trying to make them perfect there's a look at that edge I got on there shining pretty good so yeah pretty happy with the overall turnout of it definitely a user now uh, you know actually polished up that little edge there a little bit where the the handle started coming apart but pretty cool little knife colonial uh, Barlow made in America fixed by fixed up by an American everyone should be happy no Chinese involved in the making of this video but that's going to do it for me guys hope you enjoyed the restoration slash fixer upper and uh, if you did enjoy it make sure you hit the like button and we'll see you next time take care Thank you.